Hey guys, I want to go over uh, the infrared testing uh, in the handout. Uh, I'll get through this as quickly as possibly as I possibly can. Uh, so get it out and watch the video, follow along. I'm just going to hit the high points, so it shouldn't take too terrible long, okay? And let me switch screens. There we go. Infrared testing by me. Uh, uh, bad gases, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide. This is this is produced during combustion. Uh, carbon dioxide is also produced during combustion, but it's not really technically considered a bad gas. I mean, it is a bad gas. We just don't regulate it when it comes to automo automotive. Now. The one gas that I'm not talking about yet is uh, NOx, oxides of nitrogen. I will be talking about that when we get to EGR. <clears throat> Old school, long time ago. These were the, 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 the fail levels of these gases. 1.2% uh, or less of CO, 220 parts per million or less in hydrocarbons. Realize that this is a very dirty car. If you started this car in the lab, it would burn your eyeballs out very quickly. This car is extremely dirty. New cars, the levels on new cars, like the level of hydrocarbons, I mean, maybe one, zero, once the catalytic converter is heated up. Realize there's still some hydrocarbons and some COs coming out, but those are post-conditioned after combustion and, and, and they're dealt with in the catalytic converter. So it's not like newer cars, newer engines are that clean. It's the catalytic converter that's doing its job. Does that make sense? They're still dirty, but they're much better than these numbers without a catalytic converter okay now we still get some of these readings coming out there are still times where high hydrocarbon readings are coming out of even a modern vehicle and it has to do with acceleration or deceleration in, in some instances you know i accelerate the only way to build power in the cylinder is to put you know make the air fuel ratio rich, although I really hate that term. I think I've discussed this already. I hope I have. Uh, uh, just makes it rich. It's the only way to build power. So that is going to come out of the tailpipe. Catalytic converter does great job, you know, cruising down the highway or, you know, small incremental stuff, but you hammer on it, it's going to dump a bunch of emissions, which is allowed. So where does this HC come from? Well, I'm pretty sure when we've talked about misfires in the past, I told you that a definition of a misfire is when any hydrocarbons exit the cylinder. It's misfiring on that amount. So where does it come from? Well, you know, we we have some, you know, condensation. And it's really not, it's the best word to use without getting into, you know, crazy science, chemistry stuff. But just realize we do have some now there's always some hc in the exhaust we 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 control it uh, uh but it's more on an engineering level i mean we do all kinds of stuff we build these engines so that there isn't any space for the gasoline to sit we try to keep the heads really hot so that it vaporizes quickly we we reduce the amount of space between the first land of where the piston ring is and the top of the, the the piston you know if there's any gas that collects on the on the sidewalls because they're cooler uh, basically condensation the when the piston moves up it literally fills that area with raw gasoline and raw gasoline does not burn it needs to be atomized inside the cylinder in order to have good combustion i'm going to put up a cool video on combustion so look, here is uh, 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 hydrocarbon levels based on air-fuel ratio. 
and as you can see, of course, it's it's high on the on the rich side, but it also starts to elevate on the lean side. This this is because there there is too much oxygen inside the cylinder. The 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 flame front goes out. It's it again. It comes to the atomization of the fuel, but we also need to have the fuel close enough to ignite the other gasoline particles. If that makes sense, I hope that does. Here's the CO one. You can see on, on CO, it's high on the rich side, and it's low on the lean side. Well, the thing to remember about CO is CO really wants to be a CO2, but it, it, it becomes CO only when there isn't enough O's in, in, in the cylinder in order to make CO2. So we start looking at CO2, you know, CO2 starts to rise, CO will fall off. Not because there's less of it, it's just, well, there's less of it, but because it's being made into CO2. You get that part? It's great because on the lean side, we have lots of extra O's. It grabs a hold of that. The CO grabs a hold of that and becomes CO2. So as CO2 starts to drop, or CO starts to drop, CO2 starts to rise. And if, you know, we don't have enough oxygen in the cylinder, like we have an extremely rich mixture, we don't have any oxygen because it's combining with the HC, the H's in the HC, the hydrogen in the HC, to form water. No, anyways. And then here's CO2. CO2 is high at, at stoichiometric and drops off on both sides. That's because we're either making more CO on the rich side or there just isn't enough carbon to make it because the hydrocarbons, there's less hydrocarbons because it's a lean mixture. O2. Now, this is a pretty good indicator gas. Well, the CO and the O2 are both good indicator gases. You know, O2 is high on the lean side which makes sense, and it drops off on the rich side. That's because there just isn't any, or there's a, an abundance of HC. Now, in a perfect world, we would make H2O, which is water. We break the H and C, you know, bonds, and we combine the Cs with the Os, and the Hs with the Os, and we make O2, H2O, CO, and CO2. So, the HC and the O2 get broken down into free-floating H's and free-floating O's, and then they're recombined using the pressure inside the cylinder and the heat inside the, during combustion. So here, we can look at some gas analyzing analyzers. If we look at this, Here's my specifications again. And remember, this is a dirty car. We're just using this for an example. And, and honestly, don't get too hung up on the numbers. It's the relationship between the numbers that's important. Okay, so if we look at this one, now I've got 650 parts per million, 4% of CO. So it's got a lot of CO and it's got a significant amount of HC, but it's not crazy high. This is too rich. Now, could be due to a couple of things. Could be, you know, due to extra fuel coming in. Leaky injectors are really common. High fuel pressure is very common. Uh, 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 you know, something along those lines. But the important part is, you know, uh, CO is high, CO2 is depressed. Why? Because there's, you know, there's, there's not enough O's. And if I look at my O's, there aren't any. Well, that's going to start making CO and that's going to be an issue for us. Let me look at this one. This is actually on the lean side. And I can tell it's on the lean side by looking at the, the CO and the O2. Now CO is very, very low and O2 is, is very high. Because I've got so much oxygen inside the cylinder, I'm starting to get some uh, HC coming out. This would be like a vacuum leak. And we look at this one. 
This is a huge amount of HC. Now, some of these guys can go up to, you know, 2,800 or uh, 28,000, 30,000 parts per million. But this is a pretty significant number. Now, I, I don't have a lot of CO and, and I don't have a lot of CO2, but I do have a bunch of oxygen. This is a classic misfire. This is an ignition failure, maybe a mechanical failure. You know, ignition's not working. It is getting fuel, though. Get it? The only time I can have high HC and high O2 at the same time is a misfire. There's your important part. Okay? Thanks. I think, I think we're good. Any questions? If you got questions, now's a good time. I, I wish I had uh, uh, the shop available to us to do this because I would put an ignition analyzer in your hand. And one of the things that I want you to see, would want you to see when we were in the shop was, you know, uh, on acceleration. Acceleration, we get a big dump. On deceleration, we get a big dump of HCs uh, as well from a high RPM. Now, the catalytic converter takes care of that. But it takes a second. So, you know, I give it a big dump of RPM, you know, boom, uh, uh, and it would literally take three to five seconds before that big dump would come through and come out the exhaust and show up on the gas analyzer. That's what I wanted you to see, would want you to see when we were in the lab. Uh, and that's a, a, a product of the catalytic converter doing its job. Uh, talk more on catalytic converters once we get there, but realize that part's coming, okay? No. Uh, oh, uh, that doesn't happen. That burp on acceleration or on deceleration doesn't happen when the car has uh, throttle actuated control. When it's throttled by wire, that doesn't happen. The computer doesn't allow you to release the gas pedal that fast it comes in for like a you know it closes and it's it's like a soft landing you know like a cable operated throttle you know as soon as you take foot off it it you know clamps the air off coming in that's going to give us a rich burp on deceleration that's what i want to say that's going to give us this rich burp on deceleration but tack won't allow that to happen it'll won't close the throttle plate all the way until engine rpm comes down and it's managed to clear all the gas out of the cylinder. So it's going to be giving it as much air through the intake as it possibly can. That's my point. I got to make that point too. Uh, I think that's about it. Thanks.